that'd be fun. Okay. Sure. I brought my card. I always bring toys with me. Okay. It's in the way. Pick a blue card and the same. The yellow ones are too easy. No yellow. No yellow. Blue. Yellows are too easy. But they're high school. They should get No, no. Really, the yellows are way too easy. I'll take the yellow. You take a blue. Take a blue. You must all take a blue. This is a math science partnership group. I thought we'd be safe back here. I love it. Blue. Yeah. Now, I don't expect you to do this by yourself because we want to construct viable arguments to critique the reasoning about it. So turn to somebody and see if you can help each other figure out the structures that are in your problems. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, well, we're gonna take you. Oh, because <laughs> mine is like oh, wow. I will come over there and see. I, Now remember, you're not solving it. Right. You're trying to identify the structure of it. You guys, I'm sure, as soon as you get a road you try to solve it. Well, that's how I Right? That's not how you are. I guess as soon as I see a word problem, I figure out how to avoid solving it, right? Yes. Yeah, so we want to do it. We do it. We just make a diagram. I don't understand the problem first. The spent on the book, right? Yes. So, take it from. so that's, I think there are several structures. I think so. I think it's multi-structure, yes. multiple structures. Yes. Multiple structures. Okay, so he has an amount of money. Yeah. First he sets aside three-fifths, and then he takes away again. Yeah. 
okay? Now this three-fifths idea is three-fifths in and of itself some kind of structure. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. And that would be... I don't think they're wrong. I see what you're trying to get at. Yes. Okay. Well, it's not up on the list, but right. it's not I'm Okay. I know it's kind of funny. I'll go two ways. I got that ball. But that is it coming together? Or if you had an overview, you see, I just want to give them five girls. Yes, it's kind of a structure. I actually write for that. Yes, it is. Three of those five. That would be one of the good models for it. Okay. Go. Okay. Read off. Let's hear it. That's because we want. We need you have big lines. Brian spent three dollars less than three fifths of his money on a book, and three dollars more than three fourths of his remaining money on a pen. He still had fifty cents left. Which items cost more between the book and the pen? So which one is more expensive? The book? Okay, that has a lot of structures. To yes, write. we figured that out. Yeah, that one. And that's why whenever people are like, whoa, well, think about how many pieces, how many structures are in there. That's why it's complex. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've obviously got comparison, additive comparison, yes. and then you've got equal groups because you're dealing with fractions. Anytime you're dealing with fractions, you're working with equal groups. So, right? What else did we hear? Let's pick up another one. Because there's more to it than that. From. Yeah, We've got taking from because you spent. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But also putting together in the sense that if you take what he spent here and you take what he spent there and the fifty cents, you put it all together, that's how much mm -hmm. money he has. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind so of so it's that whole and take it, yeah, yeah. It's whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah. The mm -hmm. part part whole. Was there a multiplicative comparison too? Because it was just three fourths as much. <coughs> three fourths of his remaining money on a pen, and three fifths of his original money. So fractions of a whole could be you know, right. three fourths of something could be multiplicative comparison, or equal groups, depending upon how we approach it. Mm -hmm. And and additive comparing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. When, when we read these, I mean, that's a perfect one that I'd say I would have to make a diagram to yes, solve it. Right. That's where the tape diagrams, I think, are very powerful. Okay. Right? And there are kids who would go right to the equation level on that and might leave some pieces out because there's so much going on. Right? Yeah. So that's why I think we need mo This is a rich task problem. Solving that problem, I, I mean, first of all, that's a mean one. I don't think Park gives that at one point. That would not be a one point problem. <laughs> oh, we're glad to hear. I wrote the problem, and well, I know it's me. Love it. So, <laughs> what, what, um, this would happen before middle school. This problem would yes. occur before middle school, wouldn't it? Actually, all of the problems you have are, for, are, are, are pretty much third, fourth, fifth, mm -hmm. sixth, mm -hmm. some sixth, some, sixth. Mm -hmm. some seventh, because of the ratios and proportional reasoning, it's depending upon what we have in the set. But most of them are, are mm -hmm. fourth, fifth, sixth, I think. Okay. Oh, could you go through how you would solve that with that type of diagram? Sure. Okay. Be okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. Because last not year. we yeah. did do it last year, but yeah. not yeah. all of us may be familiar with that. And I didn't use it again, so I forgot. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a dry erase? Yes. Yeah. Because it's, it's real. It's real. Okay. I've seen it once or twice. So it's Brian's money that we're dealing with, right? Oh, that's hard to see. Right. Oh, is there a black one up there? Oh, you know what? There's one right behind you. Yes, yes. This one would be good. Can we send this one up? I got, I've got this one. Okay. Well, we'll see if it works. Oh, that one's great. That one's great. Okay. That one's great. Okay. So we've got Brian's money. Sort of fifths, right? Um, 
So three dollars less than three fifths. So here's the three fifths, right? And I'm going to subtract three to that for the book. Okay. And three dollars more than three fourths of his remaining money. So I'm going to have to break this into fourths now and say that. Plus three for this, so that's going to cancel each other out, right? Um, on a pen. Which items cost more between the book and the pen? Oh, we have 50 cents left. Well, now that I know that this section is 50 cents. Mm -hmm. for us to think about what's going on here. Yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know if I'd use it with kids. <laughs> it's a great problem to teach. Yes, yeah, right. Great problem for us. Yeah. Okay. And then this one, it's um, he had 50 cents left, so this would be $1.50. So he actually spent four fifty on the pen, right? Mm -hmm. And he got the book for free. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice pen. This is special. <laughs> it's an astronaut pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you buy the pen and, and you get, get the, the book, book for free. free. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could happen in real life. Sure. It's a very expensive pen. Which, co which items cost more between the book and the pen? Obviously, well, the pen. Oh, the pen. It's free for the book. He must have won, but yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where he's shopping. This could be at the book fair. And he could have won. <laughs> yeah. this is the, this is the, uh, or at the school store, and you know, it's, it's Rift Day, and they got a free book, right? <laughs> We're trying to make it work. Yes. This is so hard, though. I what? get this. However, I want to understand which structure was used when. Okay. I'm still Good working point. on that piece. Great. So when we broke it up into equal parts, that's equal, equal, equal groups. groups. Right. Right? Okay. Okay. When we said $3 less and $3 more, that's added to and comparison. Right. Subtractive comparison. Okay. Depending on how you want to think about it. Um, when we talk about which items cost more between, well, obviously we're comparing two numbers, so that's more okay. added to comparison. Um, when we were, um, $5 if, when we were putting it together, the whole thing is five dollars. That that part from right. whole relationship okay. with the fifty cents. Okay, thank you. No, I'm glad you asked that. That's a good question. It's hard to think this way because we weren't taught to think this way. You give this problem. We should probably change this problem to be a just a pinch. Let's just have him have, you know, four dollars and fifty cents left and then we can take it. Just flip the book in the pen and it'll make a little bit more sense. Mm. Yeah. Well it was a buy a book and get a free pen. Yeah. It could be that it's one of those fancy schmancy, you know, cross <laughs> pen. <laughs> At a garage sale, he bought the cross pen and they gave him the book for free. Yeah, yeah. I really want to think about this problem, but we don't have to do it here. Yeah. Well, I think this is a very interesting problem. I do too. Yes. Just the idea, yeah. Okay, so the idea of the structures, how do you think that's going to play into what we do? Like, how's that going to impact you this year? I'm going to give you a card back. Thank you. You'll, I can send you the set of cards if you want. Can you? Oh, that'd, that'd be great. Be yeah. Because that way you can send yeah. them on to the folks. Yes. Thank you. Um, we will have done. Yeah. We need to get to look at one of our questions. I can send you the whole well, set of cards. Um, what do you think? In our district, we've already broken down the common core standards into cluster targets and built our map for this upcoming year and we're working on the remaining assessments. As far as the everyday part, um, the expectations that we do with your task learning, so starting with those ideas and using manipulatives, what, what the algebra tiles and the well, hands-on equations yeah. I found better for introduction to algebra. And then once you were getting into quadratics, then I found the algebra tiles. And it's helpful, helpful too. We have the Odyssey component to help um, almost with a two prong approach. So I can assign students um, an introduction to whatever cluster target that we're doing so that it's uh, modeled as a flipped classroom. Yeah. And then we give the time at school, I 
give lunch, we give after school in case there isn't an option at home. So I think it's very clear how our implementation of Common Core will look going into this next school year. Um, I'm just excited to get to work on it. I, I think you're right on the edge. I mean, I think you're right there yeah. when, when I hear you describe what you're doing. It's, yeah. We need I more time in the more. day, though. Of course, to get better, to be more effective at it. Well, and, and I'm thinking, you know, when we realize that kids are going to come in and they don't have this background right. and how powerful Well, and that's they what's are. nice and about Odyssey. Right. And that's where I come into play as a special ed teacher. And even though I'll always be um, disappointed about this, the RTI professional, um, <laughs> even though that's a gen ed initiative, um, yeah. is I get a block with them because I get them for enhancement so I can assign them that odyssey and that's the exposure to manipulating things on the computer and the remediation of telling time, counting money, things like that. Um, and I also get to um, complement whatever we're doing in the classroom with going through models like this. Yeah, I, I think that the key, the RTI professional is a person who's an expert in the modes of representation. So, well, that should be every classroom teacher. It should it's be. True. However, not everybody is. So they should be choosing someone who's an expert at that to intervene. And that is a compliment at times. To you know, say, I'm the RTI professional. I am the expert at the modes of representation. I am the expert at saying, okay, you don't have these modes. Let me help you. Use what modes you have to plug that. So I know it, it's not like the best title, but in a way that they should be called them the modes expert that's what you are and any type of intervention you're going to be intervening in whatever modes are a gap mm -hmm. so that's what your role was you're the mode expert <laughs> when I think about the original question you asked if I, I, I sort of remember are, are we helping our kids understand these different problem structures and we might might not say to the kids okay today we're you know we're looking at multiplicative comparison yeah but we might have several problems and ask them do you see how these problems are alike yes. or do you see how these are different in order to take the thinking a little bit That's beyond That's practice seven and eight. Yeah, it really exactly. is. Exactly. What I think is key is when we can start introducing these and have some anchor problems, mm -hmm. and then they can say, yes. we can have those anchor, I like to make anchor problems and have a kid be a recorder, and we make a poster of that anchor problem. And then say, okay, which anchor problem does that remind you of? Well, it reminds me of that one, but it also reminds me of that one. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's got two processes in it. Maybe that's why it relates to two different structures. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. And so I think if it were me, I'd have probably, you know, there's there's 24 different anchor problems because I'd want to have all eight structures and I'd want to have an unknown in all three locations. But I don't have to. I could have eight anchor problems and just say the unknown is here. We can constantly say, where's the unknown? Where's your variable? I would say, where's your variable at your level, not where's your unknown, but it could be either way, right? How many unknowns do we have in some cases? Because that's a key piece too. How many unknowns do you have? Oh, we're solving for two. Well, that's a really complex problem then. But I think the key piece to all these is that they don't, we can't assume that they know them because we can't assume that the teachers who preceded us know them. So I think that's a great way to start out the year. We start out with those eight mathematical practices with them and remind them what they are because they should be doing them, right? We start out with those problem solving structures. That's huge. Yes, and, Everything can to yes. and the modalities. Yeah. I have two. Yeah. And the anchor problem. I have a poster of the modalities. Like one of the folks who comes to a lot of our training, her husband's a printer, and I said, could you talk to him about, you know, like making a website where people can order these cheap? Because, you know, it's really nice poster. So she's working with it, him on it. Great. You know, I said, eventually I'm going to have to send that out to people that, yes, he's got our posters cheap because nobody has any money. Cheap posters. I mean, not cheaply made, but right, yeah. cheap cost. Because his, his wife is a teacher. He's got to know she has no money. Right? <laughs> cheap. Because <laughs> if you were starting out, this is purely hypothetical. <laughs> sure, we know. Um, I'm just, this is totally the problem my kids have. I mean, and I, I was forced to use this curriculum last year that was so procedural, and the kids, the some kids could memorize it, but most kids couldn't because they're learning disabled, they don't have learning disabilities. I mean, how many days would you spend going, starting something like this in a high school level? You know, I, I, I still, you know what, this is so foundational. I as know. many days as it takes. I really think that you can't be doing practice one if you do not understand yeah. how to attack problems. 
And I would probably say, uh, you know, I if I was at the kindergarten level, I would start with the putting together, taking apart, because that's composition and decomposition. I remember that's what I tell the kindergarten.